Hi everyone, welcome to sqlcontent.com. In this video we are going to download SQL Server 2017 and then subsequently we will proceed further with the installation and other configurations. Let's first download SQL Server 2017. SQL Server 2017. So in the Google I just searched for SQL Server 2017 and from the download we will from the Microsoft download site we will download SQL Server 2017. So we will be using the developer edition so let's click on download now. So this will download an exe file which will give us options to download the developer edition binaries or directly install it on our environment. So as you can see we have got this uh, SSEI-TEF so just double click on this it will ask you for the administrative privileges so we will give this uh, SQL Server 2017 Developer Edition uh, pop-up window wh where we have to choose the SQL installation type like basic custom or download media. So I have uh, clicked on this download media and already downloaded the binaries. So here is the file which I have downloaded. It's almost nearly about 1.43 gig. Uh, so we will be using this particular ISO file to install it as a standalone instance as of now to on one of our virtual environment. So I'm using Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager to set up our virtual machines. Now I have a domain controller which I have already configured before. So I'm going to start that up and then I will install my virtual machine which is part of this domain controller. So my domain controller is starting up. So let's just start our machine which is known as SQL 2017 SGPT1 so let's do a normal start so the machine is starting up so just give a couple of seconds to start it up so our machine is up so let's log in So for easiness I have already copied the binaries onto my machine earlier. So we will just proceed with the installation. So I have copied the binaries into one of the folders equal 2017. We will just use the setup to install a standalone instance. This will be a series of installation using the GUI method and then using the silent or command prompt methods. So as you can see we are here in the SQL Server Installation Center. We will go to the Installation tab and we will choose New SQL Server Standalone Installation or Add Feature to an Existing Installation. So now we are here on the setup. So as you have see, uh, you can see here that uh, we have uh, downloaded the Developer Edition. So we are going with it without any changes. Just click Next. We will just select the license terms. I accept it. Click next. There will be certain global rules which will be run. So you can see the details like setup administrator and accounts and restart computer pending, the framework and other stuff. So once it is passed successfully, we can move to Microsoft updates. Now, if you want to uh, automatically download the updates, you can choose this button. Uh, if your uh, server or, or your virtual machine is connected to the internet it's recommended but uh, because my machine doesn't have the internet connection at the moment so I'm not just choosing this option I'm just clicking next so because I have not chosen the Microsoft updates I'm not and doesn't have an internet connection so I will not be installing the product updates as well just click next it will install the setup files now we have all couple of rules which has been executed and passed and a couple of them are warning like Windows Firewall. We can ignore this Windows Firewall at the moment and click Next. Now we are in the feature selection so let me just drag a bit further on this to see all the features. Now you can see that we are here in Database Engine, uh, Replication, we are having machine learning services as well like uh, R language and Python. Um, for in the database as well as on a standalone machine 
I'm not choosing all these things at the moment, so I'm just going to install the default feature of SQL Server Database Engine and SQL Server Replication. We will look on more on these things when uh, we go into more details of the installations. Um, for the timing, I'm going to install the client tool backward compatibility, client tool SDK, uh, client connectivity SDKs, um, and client tool connectivity. Uh, I'm not choosing at this moment integration services as I will be uh, showing you in the later part of the video or in, in the next sessions. So let's click next. Um, now you can choose to change the installation directories if you want to. Uh, by default organization don't install uh, SQL Server on C drive, they choose to install it on some other drive. So, But for this video I'm just keeping it to the default locations. Now click next. Now if you want to change the default instance you can change and give a default instance name. For the video I'm going to keep it as a default instance as MS SQL. So by default the instance name will be the machine name not MS SQL Server. It will be uh, connected using the default machine name. Click next. Now in the server configuration, uh, we have to provide the account name and password under which the C these services will run. Uh, I'm not going to touch SQL Server browser. I'm leaving it to run under NT Authority local services. But for SQL Server engine, I'm going to choose one of our accounts, which is an Active Directory account. I'm choosing my administrative account. So I'm going to put a password now. I'm not touching SQL Server agent. We can configure that later on. But I'm going to click this GT Ground Performance Volume Maintenance. So it is going to initialize your um, disk for the database engine services to access uh, the files. Just click Next. I'm using the default coalition. I'm not going to change it, so I'm not making any changes at the moment. I'm just choosing the default options as Windows Authentication. We will change it to mix mode later on. Uh, the data directories and the... Uh, so, just give me a second. I have to add my current user as an administrator. The data directories, my data files, my system, TimDB, my backup directories, all are going on a default location. We are not changing anything. The TemDB, this is the feature which has been introduced with SQL Server 2016 that you can define your TemDB file sizes and number of files to while doing the installation. If you are using a file stream, you can make those changes, but I'm not making anything at the moment. Just click Next. So we will get to the summary page of our uh, feature selection and installations and the directory location and the collation which are we are going to use. This is SQL Latin 1 Journal CP1 underscore CIAS. Uh, I'm just going to install it. This is going to create an INI file in the later videos. We will see that how to install a SQL Server instance using a configuration file and at that time we will use the existing configuration file. We will append it and do the installation. Now just click install. So it will begin the installation and it will take a while during the time I'm just pausing the video. 